Unit 2 is on descriptive statistics and probabilities. Section 4.1 is on basic concepts of probability. And some, before we can actually really start delving into the specifics with probability, we do need a few basic concepts. So first, an event is any collection of results or outcomes of a procedure and is denoted with a capital letter such as capital A here. A simple event is an outcome of an event that cannot be further broken down into simpler components. And then sample space consists of all possible, possible keyword in that sense, simple events that cannot be broken down any further and is denoted by a capital letter S and ran out as a set. So for example, let B denote a baby boy and G denote a baby girl. Let us identify the simple events and sample space from this lovely little table down here. So the simple events, we could se kind of separate this out since you know they have a procedure for a single birth and three births. Uh, first, the single birth. You can have one boy or one girl. So the sample space for that would just be one B and one G. That's it. And then you would naturally have a child based upon that. Uh, for the three births one, though, and this one has a bit more of an explanation in that table down there as well. But let's say we have two girls followed by one boy. So GGB would be the specific outcome from the sample space that we would have that with. And an example of not a simple event would be something such as three births with two girls and one boy. Why is that not a simple event? Because we could write that out as GGB, BGG, or GBG. The reason why that this two girls followed by one boy is a simple event because that can only happen one way. You would, you would have to have two girls followed by a boy. Just saying the phrase two girls and one boy, that doesn't really specify the order that the girl and the boy would have to be um, born in. It just was the three, so the three could be in any of those combinations. And the overall sample space for three births are down here. GGB, BGG, GBG, BBG, BGB, GBB, BBB, and GGG. And some notation with regards to these probabilities. Capital P denotes a probability, so such as probability of X, let's say. Uh, a, B, and C are specific events. Probability of A is the probability of event A occurring, and that must be between 0 and 1 inclusive. Right? And if we have a probability of, let's say, 1 half, uh, 0.5, that's 1 half, that's a 50-50 chance. The closer we get to 1, the more likely it is that the probability that that event occurs. And if we have a probability of exactly 1, the event is considered certain to happen. Likewise, the closer we get to 0, the more unlikely it is that that event occurs. And if we have a probability of zero, then it's called an impossible event. There are three approaches, three common approaches when it comes to probabilities. And technically, I guess I should say there are technically two. The third one is just kind of a uh, overall gist, <laughs> to put it mildly. Um, the first one being the relative frequency approximation of probability, basically an estimation. This is where we use an experiment, and we obtain all this data, and we find the probability of whatever it is that we are looking at, and based upon that, we are looking at the number of times that that event occurred. So, probability of A here would be number of times the event A occurred, divided by the total number of times the procedure was repeated. So, if we need an example of that, of that, let's say we want to flip a coin a hundred times. Uh, 
and then we're going to record the number of heads. Right? And if from that, let's say, you know, based upon the number of recording heads, let's say we had a total of, I don't know, let's say 39 heads. Does that mean that the probability, that would mean based upon our example here, that the probability of obtaining a head from this experiment is 39 over 100. Of course, if it's a fair coin, it should be exactly 50-50. Note how this is not 50-50. Um, but it's from an experiment, and it's the number of times that that event occurred divided by the total number of times the procedure was repeated. And as you can see, it does not necessarily have to equal the actual probability that we know of. The classical approach to probability, this is the probability that we all think about, basically. Uh, it requires equally likely outcomes. Probability of A is equal to the number of ways A occurs divided by the number of different simple events. Or, ran as S over N for S as the number of ways A occurs, N as the number of different simple events. So if we still want that probability of heads, we know on a fair coin there's only one way for a head to occur. I have a total number of two simple events, heads or tails. So note how these are not equal. The third one is subjective probabilities. P of A is estimated by knowledge of the relevant circumstances. A subjective probability, this is kind of basically where we think of a particular event, what might occur think what might occur. Naturally, that is not the most scientific way of going about it, and it's certainly not something that you would use in, let's say, for example, a research paper or some type of experiment due to the fact it's, well, subjective. But this is the way that we might think about probabilities, for example, in real life when we uh, go about trying to determine whether or not something is likely to occur or not, we weren't going, oh, the probability of this occurring is 5%. No, we would say it's unlikely to occur as a type of subjective probability. A simulation, this is where it beha the, uh, a simulation of an event is where the event behaves in the same way as the procedure itself. So similar results are produced. So for example, we could sit in what my example of, you know, this first one right here, of flipping a coin a hundred times. We could certainly sit down and flip a coin a hundred times, but who wants to sit there for a hundred coin flips? Might get boring after a while. So we could simulate coin flips by, for example, using a computer with a, we don't even have to use a random number generator. There are some aspects where the computer will automatically flip a coin for us. And then we can record the number of heads, or the number of tails, and there we go. Uh, the results are exact f simple fractions for these probabilities, when possible. Naturally, I mean, how often do you see the probability as a fraction? Not that often. We usually round it to three significant digits. Uh, it's typically not run as a percent, however, despite the equivalence of the probability being a value, and then you can write that as a percent, but we typically don't. Professional journals almost always express the probabilities as decimals, not percents, and if we were to use SAS for any type of calculations, it would give us a decimal. Uh, the law of large numbers. This is a procedure that as a procedure is repeated many times, the relative frequency probability of an event tends to approach the actual probability. Meaning that the relative frequency calculation that we had would equal, always to approach, the classical probability. Meaning, I just used an example here of a hundred times. We could have done that. Let's say if we did it a thousand times. Certainly after a thousand times, the probability of obtaining heads will definitely be pretty close to one half. 
and especially if we were to extend that out even further, I'm sure it would get all the more closer to one half, as we do it many, many, many times. So as another example, let's say, um, assume that there were three million skydiving jumps in a recent year, and 21 of them resulted in deaths. We want to find the probability of dying when making a skydiving jump. So we would have a probability of a skydiving death. That's where we take the number of skydiving deaths divided by the number of skydiving jumps. So 21 deaths divided by 3 million jumps. That, as a decimal, is a... <laughs> oh boy. Nowhere near three significant digits. <laughs> 0 0.000007. Very small number. Uh, when three children are born, the sample space of genders is that was from example 1 is BBB, BG, BBG, BGB, BGG, GBB, GBG, GGB, and GGG. If boys and girls are equally likely, then those eight simple events are equally likely. Hint, they are not equally likely. But we're just saying in that for in this particular example, the actual probabilities are a little bit off. I'm um, assuming that boys and girls Goals are equally likely. We want to find the probability of getting three children all of the same gender when three children are born. So, probability of the same gender, that means obtaining three boys or three girls from that sample space. So, the number of three same gender children divided by total three children births. So, there are two that are the same gender. Three boys, three girls. And there are a total of eight possible options. So two eighths, same thing as one fourth, reduced. As a decimal, that's 0 0.25. For example, number three. Let us say, in a study of U.S. high school drivers, it was found that 3,785 of them texted while driving during the previous 30 days. And 4,720 did not text while driving during that same time period. This is based on data from texting while driving by Olson Schultz Eaton from the uh, Pediatrics Journal, Volume 131, Number 6. Based on these results, if a high school driver is randomly selected, find the probability that he or she texted while driving during the previous 30 days. So for this, we need to think about it a little bit, right? The number of the text we found in here was 3,785. The number that did not text was 4,720. So the overall number of drivers, we would add these two, adding 3,785 and 4,720 gives us a value of 8,505 as the total. So to find the probability, we take that probability of texting while driving, number of the text divided by number of drivers, 3,785 divided by 8,505. That's 0 0.445. Rounded, of course. Uh, if a year is sorted at random, we want to find the probability that Thanksgiving Day in the United States will be on a Wednesday. Well, that can happen, right? Thanksgiving is typically... Um, well, I shouldn't say typically. <laughs> Thanksgiving in the United States is always scheduled on a Thursday. So that probability of it being on a Wednesday, that's zero impossible. How about the probability of Thanksgiving Day being on a Thursday? Probability of it being on a Thursday, as I was just saying a few moments ago, Thanksgiving is always on a Thursday. So that probability is 1. It's certain to happen. Complementary events are where we have the uh, complement of some event, let's call it A. It's denoted as A with a bar on top of it. So A bar. That consists of all, part of all outcomes in which event A does not occur. And we would read this as A complement. Or complement of A.
And the probability that event A occurs and the probability that A does not occur, aka the complement of A, add to be 1. So probability of A plus probability of A complement makes 1. In other words, the probability of the complement can be calculated as probability of A complement is equal to 1 minus probability of A. A fun little, little uh, equation for that. Um, from back from example number two, it showed that in a recent year there there's three million skydiving jumps and 21 of them resulted in death. We will find the probability of not dying when making a skydiving jump. If 21 die, I have a total of three million. The number that do not die, we take three million, subtract 21, you get two million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred and seventy nine. A big number. So the probability of not dying is the same thing as the number that did not die divided by the number that's skydiving, so 2,999,979 over 3 million, that makes 0 0.999993. We could also write it in, this, in the uh, formula that we had before, 1 minus the probability of dying, which we, we already found. So that's the same thing as 1 minus 21 over 3 million. So, 1 minus 0 0.00007. And that also makes 0 0.9999993. Uh, the lowest significance when it comes to probabilities. This is if under a given assumption, the probability of an observed event is very small and the observed event occurs significantly less than or significantly greater than what we typically expect with that assumption. We conclude that the assumption must is probably not correct. So for a significantly high number of successes, that's where the probability of x or more successes is unlikely with a probability of 5%, so 0.05, or less. So the probability of x or more is less than or equal to five ten, five hundredths. Excuse me. Probability of x or more is less than or equal to five hundredths. Significantly low number of successes. Uh, the probability of x or fewer successes is unlikely with a probability of five percent or less. So the probability of x or fewer is less than or equal to five hundredths. Uh, five percent is a standard amount. It's very common. I should note that. That's common. It could be as low as 1% or as high as 10%, but that depends more on the consequences of why you're running the, the test or determining if um, or determining if it's a significantly high or low number. You would be typically be given that value. Otherwise, if you're not given that value, you would assume it to be 5%. Thank you.